Alright, welcome to another episode of The Paint Booth. We're a few episodes in, and as you can see, we've started on the Necrons stuff. So, I did some Warriors in the last video. This time, we're going to start off on the Silent King, Zarek himself. Uh, this is also... Uh, th this model is huge, as you're going to see in a minute. Uh, it's also going to be the first one that I do in a, uh, a multi-part, or multi-video type of deal just because it the the model's so big it's intricate and stuff which you know I'll just show you right now. So as you can see I got a bunch of stuff on my desk. He has this uh floating dais thing that I will be working on. Among other things, so got a guy who's gonna be sitting in that thing. Here's the king himself. Pretty big guy. Sorry, everything's loose right now. And he's got a couple little smaller dudes and just some other shit going on. But for right now, what we're going to do is move all of that to the side. Excuse my reach. <clears throat> And I will actually start on working on his two little side pieces, the triacal men here's. Uh, what these things do is they basically just float around and kind of take hits for a while, and they blow shit up. <clears throat> so that's just what this video is going to be, is just going to be doing uh, these two things. So to start out with, what I'm actually going to do is... I'm going to be using. Oh, th th this thing's actually going to be. These guys are actually going to be pretty easy. So, to start out with, I'm going to be using uh, Turbo Dork Radium. These are, uh, as you guys maybe remember from previous videos, these paints allow me to use. Um, well, they're they're a type of metallics, and they they use uh, incident angle reflection to look different, basically. So, what this one's going to be used on is the trim around the sides of the menhirs and a little bit on the interior. And then for the actual stony parts here, we're going to use dark net, which is a similar effect. It's, you know, again, metallic, but it's basically like more of a, a dark gray to black rather than just solid black. <clears throat> And on top of that, this, these paints also take a few coats to really get in there. So I'm going to start with the radium. And let's get started.
Alright, so I think that's pretty good for the uh, the radium color. As you can see, it, it does take a little bit of work, and I had to actually double coat a lot of these, or the, the whole thing. Uh, I will try and give you... So what I did is I just kind of went around the trim with it. And as you'll notice, whenever you get a uh, like a straight-on view, you can see the uh, the metallic color. But whenever you go more to the side, it kind of goes away and goes to a darker color. And that's basically how incident angles work. So that is it for the radium. And now, uh, well, as I'm working on this, I actually want to try something out a little bit different. So uh, what I actually want to do is I'm going to do this big energy orb in the middle this uh, this other one and these lightning streaks that are going down to the ground and then you'll notice that there's a lot of cracks and stuff in the rock so I actually want to do the same thing with that and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna fill that in with our dragon white a bright white and then uh, move on to a technical color or a hex wraith flame and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us a nice uh, ghostly uh, green look. So the first thing I need to do is get this white going and that's also going to take a couple coats. So let's get started on that. Right, so we finally got all the white in on these things. Looks, uh, ooh. if I could do this without sneezing. Yeah, so we have, you can see some of the details in there, the cracks in the rocks, and uh, some of the lettering, and of course all the lightning and stuff, so now... We're gonna see what it looks like with our hex ray flame. And this is gonna give it a nice glow. 
nice green glow on everything, so we'll see. Start with the big orb in the middle. So as you can see, that gives us a nice uh, a glow and a pseudo-swirling effect. And look even better down here with the lightning. Cause this stuff doesn't really, uh, it doesn't completely cover up what's underneath. It leaves enough of the underlying color showing through. And being in white, it gives us a nice uh, bright effect, which is kind of hard to do with other uh, normal, opaque uh, compounds and colors. And the only real hard part with this is getting into all of these cracks and such. But again, as you can see, the nice thing about uh, a lot of these uh, technical paints with the Citadel line is they make it easy to get uh, certain effects, aka the green lightning like this. Or I also have another color that's kind of more of a, uh, makes things look like ghostly sort of stuff. So you can see how that makes the, uh, the lightning look. Nice and uh, glowy green there. And now we'll just go ahead and finish up the orb. And let's see what it looks like on this lettering. And also, I, wanna, I did this part before painting in the actual rocks because this way it'll be easy to just go ahead and uh, kind of trim around the lines. I don't know if you can see yeah I got I got some of the uh, uh, the hieroglyphics in there. And now let's go ahead and fill the uh, the in between. In this case it's going to show up a little bit darker just because the paint uh, coagulates into the uh, the cracks and isn't as, or do, doesn't spread out quite enough that the uh, the white shows as much, but you know, it's still it's still gonna look good. It's still gonna have the nice uh, green glowy effect that we're looking for. All right, so you can kind of see that the, uh, the cracks are nice and green. And again, it's going to look better once I actually go through it with the uh, and paint over the stone surface here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and speed through the rest of this. We got our we got our green glowy effects and our trim colors in on the menus. So we are gonna go ahead and let those dry out for now. And when we get back, I'll get started on the bases and we should finish up the actual model segments.
Alright, continuing on with our first part of The Silent King, or really just his, uh, his little uh, side, side NPC buddies, floating tower things, the, the men here's. Uh, so what I'm going to do next to really kind of uh, get most of this finished, actually, is I'm going to go ahead and lay down a base color for the base. That's going to be our uh, Vallejo Cold Gray. And then for the rocks, we're going to try something new. I'm going to use uh, the dark net color from Turbo Dark, which or Turbo Dork, excuse me, which should give us a an interesting uh, surface on the uh, the rocks here. So let's go ahead and start with this base color, just because it's easy. Which technically I'm breaking my own rule, but you know who cares. some gray down. I'll go ahead and get started. dirty base color. There's going to be a lot more stuff going over top of that, so we don't really need to do much more with the gray. So now, uh, where did this go up here? Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try out this uh, dark net color and see exactly what it does. I haven't actually used this one yet. So. It's a little purplish too. Hopefully that doesn't uh Okay, yeah, so it it goes on rather gray ish. Now a little bit of a bluish color to it too. That's interesting. Actually, what what else is kind of nice is that this uh this rock surface is a bit uh, warped physically, so that'll actually give us a lot more. Uh, angles and stuff for the the uh, the incident angle effect to take place instead of just being a flat surface. But I do want to be careful getting this stuff on here because it is a wetter color, and I don't want it to spread out into. Uh, some of the other stuff that I've already done on this model. Right, so it's definitely going to need a couple different coats, but you can kind of see what's going on here. It's like a, a lighter gray color, and straight on, it's kind of like a, it has a little bit of a blue to it, but as you turn away, it goes to black, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of this. And it's probably going to take a couple coats again. But just go ahead and check it out.
Alright, so I we made some pretty good progress on the uh, the surface of our uh, floating men here. So as you can see, I more or less have the entire front at least partially coated with the uh, the dark net color. It's a little... let me see if I turn off the light. It might. So it, it gives it this kind of bluish green color and in the light it comes out more but whenever you tilt away and go into the dark it... actually that's probably not the best. Let me see. Yeah, so as you can see, if you tilt away, it gets a little more black-ish. Yeah, you see that? Uh, so, as with the other ones, this is actually going to take a couple more coats. And I also still have to do the, uh, the side pieces on this thing. But So I'm going to go ahead and apply a second coat, or and maybe even a third coat. I'm going to do that off-camera just so I don't you know, fatigue you guys on... Uh, painting and stuff, and then eventually I'm also going to dry brush a little bit over the uh, um, the rock surfaces, just to bring out even more uh, detail. And all right, well, I'm going to let this dry, clean up a little bit, and I'll come back in a minute. Alright, so I went ahead and got a nice, good uh, full coating on the fronts of these guys, or the rock faces of these guys. And so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of dry brushing on these rocks to bring out some more details. And to do that, I'm going to use this color, Poisonous Cloud. It's a nice uh, yellowish green. And it's not going to be, like, a lot, a lot. I only want to do just a little bit. Because I don't want to uh, over uh, overshadow, I guess, what I've already done. So, let's see what that looks like. Try it on here. Try with a little bit more. Alright, so I'm not sure how well it's a little bright there, but as you can kind of see, I did I did this front edge right here. It gives it a little bit of a Yeah, it brings out the edges a little bit. Nice and uh kind of this yellowish green so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of this and now in this case especially I wanna have to be careful that I only really hit the edges and kind of avoid the uh, the central the flatter surfaces because then I will just have too much uh, it, it, it'll be too smudged and I don't want that. I only want to get certain details dry brushed. Which these uh, side parts are a bit easier to do. And if you just do like a little bit nice and light, you'll get just the sections that you want. Let's go ahead and do the other side. So far so good.
So you try and get some of this middle middle orb, middle socket. That's the word I'm looking for. Again, I want to do just enough where I get you know a little bit of extra detail without drowning out the uh, the effects of the paint that I already put on here. Of course, I also want to go around the edges with this thing. And also, this dark net color is going to be used for like the, uh, well, a lot of the surfaces on the actual throne piece once I get to the, the main body of the Silent King. And then also for uh, some other similar units that I have in the Necron range. Namely, uh, any vehicles that I'm redoing and uh, canoptic units, which are basically like actual robots rather than just uh, androids as these Necron guys are. Going a little too late here. And I'm also beginning to find that I maybe should have gone over some of these surfaces with the black after putting the uh, the green inset in. But, you know, all's well. Uh, it, it is a little harder to see, but yeah, I got some of that highlighting going down, down here on this side as opposed to this side that I haven't done yet. Uh, more pronounced towards the bottom just because there's more uh, surface irregularities, but I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the remainder of these two guys with the edging work. So that should pretty much take care of that for now. Uh, yeah, the actual structure of these things is pretty much finished. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, but I think for the most part, I like the way that they're turning out. The, uh, the contrast from the trim to the actual uh, stone segments is not it's not quite as much as I'd hoped it would be but you know it still gives off a, an interesting effect which is I'm going to go ahead and emulate with the rest of the uh, actual throne structure but I'll mix in uh, some other elements in there too as well and then whenever I come back we'll do up the bases for these guys real quick and then that'll pretty much be it
Are you listening to this show and thinking, man, I'd like to start a podcast, but I don't even know where to start? Well, Buzzsprout has the answers for you. Buzzsprout is a podcast hosting service that provides a number of valuable resources to help you on your podcasting career path. For one, Buzzsprout offers indefinite hosting of all your episodes and allows you to host as much material as you want, depending on the type of subscription that you opt for. Buzzsprout also provides a means for getting your show hosted to every major podcasting platforms such as iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, you name it. In addition, Buzzsprout also provides various means to get your show monetized through various sponsorship and affiliate programs, links to other paid hosting platforms such as Patreon and YouTube, and your own personal newsroom to learn all the tips and tricks for optimizing your podcast for the greatest return on your investment. If you're hearing all this and you're still interested, you can go to my link below and receive an, and receive an Amazon gift card for starting a podcast hosting subscription that you'll receive on the second billing period of your podcast journey. Everyone has something to share and there's no time left to present. Join Buzzsprout today. So these veneers are almost done. Uh, as you can see, I've added some little skulls on the base. Uh, the base being the last thing that we got left on these guys. So we're going to go ahead and start with that first. And again, we're going to go to our handy Drake Tooth color. Once I get a nice coat of that, it's going to be Agrax Earthshade. So I'm just going to go ahead and obviously we have to double coat everything with the, with the Drake's Tooth just because of the way the white color works. Sorry, I'm just pulling up something for myself. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be two coats of this. One coat of the Earth Shade. And I'm just going to go ahead and do all that right now. Probably would have helped if I had done the skulls earlier, but I did kind of start rushing through this model a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to let those dry and then we're going to hit up uh, some of the other elements of the base, which is also again going to take a little bit of time, but that's just the way it goes. So we'll be back to this in... Alright, this thing's really cooking now. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is we we'll add a little more detail in the skulls. So, going back into our Drake White color. Just going to be a little bit of dry brushing. And I did not clean my palette last time. It's a bit of a problem. But not much. So 
Get some of that on there. And we'll just go over these skulls real quick. And pick out some of the details. All over the model. Easy peasy. A few more on this big skull here. Alright, that's good enough for that one. And the same thing with this guy. Thing. Or whatever. It's a uh, non non binary statue, I guess. A little bit more. Okay. Alright, so that will do it for that, and now we just have some of the uh, the more general parts of the base to do. So what that's going to look like, let's see, get this one, get this out of here. So now like what I've been doing with uh, all the Necron bases is we're going to do two different colors we're going to put on uh, Citadel's Astro Granite and Astro Granite Debris. So this one's kind of a grainy and this one's a lot more chunkier. And then uh, as you've also seen with my Necron bases we incorporate snow onto the bases but what I want to do for this one is I want to make these things kind of have an effect like they've been moving forward and since they have the uh, the energy here, they're obviously going to melt the snow around it. So what I'm going to do is kind of, I'm going to put more of the Astro Granite trailing off the back. And then those areas won't have any uh, snow effect on them. So it'll look like it just kind of passed through and melted stuff. And I, I might even do, I might even add uh, another color to make it look sort of burnt. Or no, another technical wash I have, but for now, we'll start with the Astro Granite. Let's get a nice chunk of that there. And you sort of just start spreading it around. And it doesn't look like much on its own, but once it dries, it gives us a, a more surface area to, or more, more details and stuff to work with. So, get some more of that on this side. It's going to be a little hard to get that stuff in the middle, but we'll try. And I will very soon be needing some more of this stuff, it looks like. Actually, yeah. You know, we'll get this big glob on this one. Get it nice and spread out. And as you can imagine, this stuff looks better whenever uh, you know it dries up, and we get an actual wash and um, uh, some dry brushing on there, which I believe I've already shown you guys somewhat before. Uh, let's put some more of this on this one. there and up front all 
Okay. Again, I don't have a lot of this left, so I want to conserve a little bit. So, put that one away. And now move on to the astrogram debris, which is a little bit newer, so I got plenty of this. And as you will see, this one has a lot more uh, texture to it. It's a lot grainier. Also a little bit drier, so it is kind of harder to work with, but not really. As you can see, it's a it's a bit chunkier right here, and not quite as uh, wet as the regular astrogranite. Let's see if I can get some of this into the middle here. Oh, nice. Very nice. And a little bit more to... So I want to cover up the edge of the model where it meets the base here. Also, as you can imagine, this is going to take longer to dry since I'm putting it on kind of chunky, but that's okay. <clears throat> and, of course, you guys won't have to uh, wait for my stuff to dry because you'll be seeing this in sped up time and or jump cuts. here all right I think that should do it for that one <clears throat> so now I just need to put some on this guy <clears throat> especially Back here, this is going to be the uh, the trailing edge of the path of these men here. So that's going to be the effect that I'm going to go for. Is more dirt and stuff on this side. And it likes to stick to my brush, unfortunately, but we can work with that at least. It's a little harder to deal with in smaller areas. Some of this right here. Alright, let's see if I can't sneak some of this into the middle. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's plenty more area for some snow. So, that will do it for the uh, the dirt on these bases. So we are going to let that dry. And then we can add some more effects to it. I don't know.
know about you guys, but I am just about ready to finish off this first part of the Silent King. The we just have a little bit of the base left. Uh, so last time I saw you guys, I put the dirt on the uh, the texture dirt, and I also went ahead and off camera I applied some of our handy dandy Nuln oil, which I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, I believe I put it in the wrong spot. Yes, I did. I put some Nuln oil on and went ahead and let that dry. Just so that, you know, it would take me even less time recording. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to dry brush ash gray over the dirt to, you know, make the, uh, the ends pop out. Uh, then I'll go ahead and clean up the uh, the rim of the base with matte black, so that'll kind of that's more for just uh, display stylistic purposes. And then, last but not least, we are adding some snow on these bases. And th this stuff, th this is a pretty cool compound. I love this stuff. And while well, you've already seen it with the Necron Warriors, you're gonna see it again with these guys. So. Get my uh, handy dandy dry brush pad all set up. Get a little bit gray. Actually, you know what? This might not be quite thick enough. Let's try that again. There we go, much better. So a little bit of gray, get our, where'd it go, here we go, dry brush. And, just go ahead and start going over the dirt. And you can already see that it's bringing out uh, some of the detail in there instead of just being, you know, all dark and gloomy, like so. We get some actual detail in there. Or popping out detail, I should say. Which, model wise, is always a good thing. It's good to have more, uh, more wow in these models I guess you could say especially if you're uh, competing competing for uh, paint wise which I don't normally do or I, well I've never done actually no that's not true I competed once but just small stuff alright so that one is all set put it there and we'll do the same thing with the other base. This will only take a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. So that is the dry brushing done. Uh, next, I'm going to put on a little black just to clean up the rims. As you can see, there's uh, some paint spill. Going down over the, uh, a little bit more, over the rim of the base. And so what I do is I always just go over all that with a layer of flat black. Like so.
and obviously what this does is it just gives me a nice clean display edge and it looks a lot more professional and I need more black it looks like there we go that should be enough And of course, whenever you're doing the base rim like this, you don't even have to really worry about, you know, thick or thin. So, there we go. Nice, clean base edge. And once it dries, obviously it'll blend into the, uh, whatever was underneath. And let's do the same thing with this one. Which actually has even more, uh... Whatchamacallit. More spill to deal with. Alright, that didn't even take that much, so went all the way around with those colors and now put these away comes the fun part I'm gonna get into our ground texture and to do that I have yet another brush we want a bigger one and now this stuff don't really have to shake up uh, I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Okay, you can't even see that through the camera at all. But, well, here, I'll show you guys. So what it is, is it's a nice, soft, granular white paint. Even that's still kind of blown out. But that's also the effect that you want with snow, because it's not... Snow's meant to be, you know, bright all across. So we'll just go ahead... Start sticking some of that on the base. And let's see if I turn the light off. It might be a little more. It, it is, it, it's kind of hard to see the, uh, the detail uh, through a camera, but if you're looking at it in real life, you can see the uh, the snow texture and the nice thing about using here I'll put this over here actually the nice thing about using a compound like this is it's normally it, it would be it's extremely hard to paint you know snow with just like a regular paint it just it, it really doesn't work actually just white in general is kind of a pain in the ass but with this we get a nice perfect white and because it's textured I don't have to worry about any sort of uh, I don't have to worry about uh, shading effects or anything like that because it's uh, formulated to be just right I guess it's a good compound To use there. Whoops. Good thing it's sturdy. Get a little bit more underneath here. And you don't you don't want to uh, just like paint it on flat. You want to sort of glob it on <clears throat> because that is how. That's how you get the texture in the snow. And we got some more around these skulls. 
And I do kind of want to make these ones look like they're more uh, buried in the snow. Like they've been there for a while. Maybe a little too buried. Push them underneath there. Awesome. Also, this stuff, uh, it pretty much looks like the way it does once it, uh, once it actually dries. Or at least very similar. It's slightly, it's not quite as glossy, but it's still pretty glossy. Alright, so that one is all finished. As I explained before, I wanted to make it look like it the other uh, model is actually carving a path through the snow. So I left a lot of this chunk uh, unsnowed, and which is also why I also put more of the uh, the texture paint in there as well. And now, do the same thing with the other one. So this backs, th this is actually kind of like the, uh, this right here is the back of the uh, the model. And the front is going to have snow all over. Get it all up uh, under the skull here. That's actually a demon skull. Fun fact, I suppose. Uh, let's see if I can get underneath. There we go. Yeah, it's looking very nice. And the thicker, the better with this stuff because, you know, it gives you more texture and you, know, you just have more room to push the snow around. But you, you can, uh, if you put enough on, it lets you build it up a bit. And, of course, I got this whole tub, so... I have plenty to work with. Also the nice thing about this as opposed to uh, maybe some other types of hobby snow that you might find which uh, would be in like a powder form. That stuff is, well I mean you have to glue but you have to glue it on first of all so that's already a pain in the ass. And if it's a powder and you spill that stuff that is very, very hard to clean up. It's basically glitter at that point, which is impossible. I mean, you're going to, if you spill glitter, you're going to be finding it for years. Whereas this tub, you know, I can lean it on its side, no problem. And that, my friends, concludes the first part of the Silent King which is not even the main model itself and that's okay because these are the triacle men here's and the idea is that these things basically float around the uh, the main floating dais and take hits and blast things so Thanks again for watching another video of the Poncho's Paint Booth. Uh, and if you like this video, obviously go back and see some of my previous videos. Like, subscribe, and see some more of my videos. Uh, let's see, did I provide the... Yes, I, I have the uh, the link to my... Uh, all my links website is Multimerity Media, also on Instagram. And if you like this, you want something different, also check out... Uh, uh, Jankity Ass Podcast, which is also another playlist on this channel, as well as anywhere you get podcasts. And then also now check out Gutsy Ass Gamer, which is going to be my uh, Twitch stream 
highlights videos. And I also have a Twitch stream, so that's also on my own, all my links. Go and check all that out. And thanks again.